Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to construct an outline to lay the paint. Um, this isn't going to be how to construct a face or anything like that. This is just purely how to copy an image without tracing or anything like that. So here we go. First thing I always do is define the brush. Um, I usually use a skewed circle and then I have opacity and size jitter on. This is so the lighter I press would be the thinner and lighter the stroke and the harder I press would be the thicker and darker the stroke like this stroke here compared to that one. Okay, now that I've done my little test strokes and all that sort of stuff, what I do is I put two dots. This can be an arbitrary width, it doesn't really matter, but this is what you're going to compare the rest of your portrait to. Um, for the beginners out there, the real beginners, what you can do is go to view, go to rulers for your image and the one you're painting and you can put your little pointer here and it'll show up there. As you can see this little line balancing around, that's wherever my pointer is. So you put your pointer there and measure across, on here you can transfer it to here. It's a very simple way, it really helps the beginners. Okay, what I'm doing though is just comparing width throughout the image. Okay, so I've, I've constructed an eye by just looking at the intersecting lines, I'm not really doing a default eye here, I can see that this cuts off here, I can see there's a darkness there and so on. So each line I look at how it intersects, this is probably the best way of doing it. To get the width of the eyebrow, what I did was compare the, the brown part of the eye and um, just put the width, because you can see it's pretty, pretty much the same. Okay, here I'm putting in the little imperfections of my eye here. You don't want your portrait to be beautiful, you want it to be accurate. You want it to be them, even if the character, they don't make things perfect, they don't make things beautiful, they make things wacky-ish, and it looks like them, probably even more so than general portraits do. So what I have done here is I put in the imperfections, I've done me. So at the moment I'm just putting a line across the eye, this is to make sure one eye isn't down here and one's up here and so on. This is to make sure everything's on the level. Then I pretty much compare the width of the eye and put the same width here. Because between two eyes there is one eye width. The only way this changes if, is if the head, you know, sort of turns. But that's a, another tutorial. For this one, um, what I also noticed was that this eye here is a lot wider, whereas this one's a lot more, well, it's normal. So it gives the more effect of an eyebrow raise. So I always, throughout the whole thing, I made sure that this one's smaller, whereas this one's more open here and so on. Okay, so then I found out where the eyebrow is by just putting my pointer up and following where it goes, and I noticed that there's just a little bit of overlap there. I did the same thing finding this right here. If you put your pointer at the certain section up here and follow it down to get a reference point, you know where it is pretty much. So what I did was I found the reference point, I put it up and that's where it was. So that's pretty much where it starts to turn. This gives you a pretty rough idea but it gives you a pretty good idea. It tends to work out. I, okay, so at the moment I'm just adding in more of what's me, my eye shape and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm putting some contouring lines to show a little bit more 3D-ness and all that. And I'm generally fixing this one. So after I've fixed it up and all that sort of stuff, I'm just making sure that the thing's the way I want it before moving down into the lower half. Because we've pretty much essentially got the top half. Okay, to find the nose, what I've done is I pretty much found out where the nose is measured up. Well, not measured up, but followed a line up and seeing where it intersects. So that's where it is. Put two lines down. I don't necessarily have the length of the nose but you, that can be found pretty easily. What I did was I did a little line from here to here, here to here. That gives you a general gives you a general reference point which you can then measure from. I didn't worry too much about the length of the nose because with Photoshop you can just put a lasso tool around it and move it up if you want. That's the easiness of um, Photoshop. Um, what else is there more to say about length? So here we go. Here's the nose shape. This nose was particularly hard to draw because it's not jagged, it's not strong, it's just it's pointy with curves here. It's a, it's a weird nose to draw. So it was a little bit harder, but for the most part, 
I pretty much got the general shape by using the default circles and giving me a little bit of a reference point then just following the lines down the bottom of the nose. So line there, line there, curve there, so on. And that's how you find that. At the moment it doesn't look too accurate but I'll fix that later. Here I just put in some highlights and um, some lines. This is this is just to help me paint. It helps me just lay down the colors and then I can remove the outline and then just go for it. So here's a highlight, here's a mid-tone, here's this, here's that. And with all these lines here that you sort of define, it just you can just slap paint on. It makes things a lot easier. I've also made sure to make things a bit more 3D by putting lines contouring down, which gives it a lot more. Okay, so here I think I'm trying to define the mouth. It looks like it. So what I did with that one was just, once again, the line down, and there it is. For you beginners out there, you can measure if you want with the rulers. Um, just remember that this has to be the same as this. So the image size has to be the same as the drawing size for the, for the easiest ruling stuff. Here I'm just fixing up the nose of liquefier. You can do that by going to filter, then liquefier, which should be about three or four down from the top, if I remember correctly. Okay, so here once again, just defining the nose a little bit more, making sure it's 3D, making sure it contours. This is, even when I'm painting, I'm slapping down color, I'm making sure that the colors are 3D. Here I was just talking a little bit about um, the three quarter of the head. Um, okay, quickly, they say, and I pretty much found it true, that the head can be sort of be cut into three quarters if you want to do the Andrew Loomis construction thing. Um, line there line between the eye and the eyebrow, line just at the bottom of the nose, and line at the bottom of the chin. And then there is also certain other lines that you can remember, like in between the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin, there's another line, which is the mouth. And I'll go into this another tutorial a little bit further on, but for this one, I'll get back to it. Here I'm just constructing the mouth. For the mouth, what I did was an oval shape and two little circles. This is a pretty good default for a mouth. Um, I use it every now and then, but for the most part, whenever I do mouse, once again, I like, like to look at intersecting lines. Um, so here I'm just adding in the chin. Um, I'm defining that by just seeing and relating the shapes there and the width there. Pretty simple thing to do. Um, one thing I'll say, when doing an outline, don't care too much if things are wrong. You can fix them so quickly before you go into painting. It's simple. If you want, you can flip the can, put the canvas, do whatever you want. Here, I'm just using the free transform tool, and I was just doing it to, you know, make it a bit more of a portrait canvas rather than landscape and so on. So here, I'm just trying to position the actual portrait the way it should be, and now I'm just putting in the hair and a little bit of reference of the body. So whenever I do the hair, I like for it to just be free flowing, like it to be um like it to be human rather than jagged lines and all that sort of stuff so I don't measure too much I just go around and so on um, as you can see I put a little bit of reference of the a um, little bit of the shoulder there and so on I haven't gone into too much detail there but it doesn't need to be for the most part that's pretty much darkness with a few strands there so that we don't necessarily need to worry about Okay, so this is the finished line art. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad. Like, there's not much that needs to be changed. It's pretty much me for the most part. And once I put paint on it, it will become me. So, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you want to see the speed painting I did of um, me here, um, I'll put a link down in the description, or probably here on the YouTube video right now. Click it. Click it. Alright, so see you for the next one, hope you had learned something and don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe for more videos like this. See ya.